Um, tell me a little bit about your skin. What is it doing right now? How are we feeling? Uh, normal to dry. Okay. On an average, summer, winter, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Um, but overall, it's pretty, pretty good. I, I might look like I'm getting sensitive. Like I have a little bit of redness around the eye area normally. Okay. That's just kind of something that I've You're just responsive in that yeah. way? Okay. Um, what are your skin goals and skin concerns? Skin goals to always stay hydrated, like a glazed donut. Okay. And a preventative, obviously. Preventative for age management, age, yeah. things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, and I just noticed a little bit of PIH. I'm going to guess those are just from previous breakout activity on the cheek area. I'm not seeing any active lesions, which is great. Um, when I do see active lesions, I always let my patients know, I'm going to do this peel. You're going to feel it on those areas. You're probably going to hit the ceiling for a second. But other than that, her skin looks really good. It feels really good. I, I would hope we're all skin therapists. We have pretty good skin in this room. Um, when was the last time you exfoliated? Do on a daily with like a acid. Okay, have you used a retinol in the last 24 to 48? No, okay, worked. then we're good. If they have used a retinol in the last day, I'm gonna just do a maintenance treatment, which is no exfoliation. I can ampule and mask them all day long, but retinol in the last 24 to 48, I'm not gonna do it. And I know when they lie to me, because when I put the peel on, they look like a stop sign. And I'm like, yeah, you did, you know? So, um, other than that, what, I'm, what we're going to do today is I'm just going to do that mild anti-aging treatment. We're just going to keep it super chill, um, but we are going to do a retinol topper at the end because I'm here, so why not? Um, and yeah, it's just going to be a really nice, easy treatment. We're going to use, uh, I'm going to start with our Microsoft cleanser. Like I said, I typically just start everybody with this. So I do a couple of pumps. Just like about the size of a quarter, all right? And then I'm gonna put this on a dry skin. So while it's going on dry is where I like to do my cleansing routine. So I'm really working all those oils in. And the, the funny thing is, is if you can get an oily skin patient onto the oil-based cleanser, it's the best thing for them. It's kind of like fighting fire with fire. But getting an oily skin person to be down with putting oil all over their face is always hard. But it really does help normalize oil production. So I'm just doing my quick cleansing routine. Right. Then we're gonna come in. I do apologize. It's a little chilly. This water. But you're gonna notice it kind of turns this white color, and that's because now it's emulsifying. So the oils are breaking down, and it's allowing, you know, whatever moisturizer she had on, whatever sunscreen she had on, any makeup that she had on, to be broken down. I also recommend, I wear gloves throughout my entire treatment. These are a little big, these are medium. I tried to wear like a size smaller than I normally would just so it doesn't feel as floppy. I also like to work with sponges. That's just my personal preference. If you like an aesthetic wipe, hit it. That's totally fine. If you like a steam towel, great. I love that for you. You know, people are always like, what do I use? I'm like, whatever you're comfortable with, it's fine. Her face will fall off. Everybody's fine. <laughs> I just like a sponge. I like a peak sponge. <laughs> so first cleanse is done. Leaves her skin nice and soft and supple. Remember that Microsoft has that derm shield in it, so I'm already introducing those ingredients to her skin. And then I could go into her second cleanse, and I'm going to use sea foam. Um, because I are sea cleansing foam because I want you guys to see just how little mm -hmm. of this product that I use because trust me when I first started I was like and it was a nightmare in the shower so little bit yeah, I'm not I even joking I was, yeah so I was even warned not to yeah. use a lot and no, I, I still I use thought, too much I thought that I wasn't using a lot and it still was like I could have bathed my entire body yeah that and that's what I tell people all the time. If you use too much at home, do it in the shower the first couple of days to get the hang of it, because then you can just use it as a body wash. Because yeah. 
because I know you're going to overuse it. But I mean, look how much just happened from that little tiny dot. That's all I need. It's very refreshing. Yeah, and it, do you smell the Fruit Loops? Some people smell like Fruit Loops. Yeah, it's very citrus. So. It's funny. Every time I teach, like somebody says something that smells like, and I'm like, that's a that's a new one. <laughs> somebody said something smelled like a pool noodle the other day, and I was like, okay, what? Oh, that's, that's not good. Yeah, I know. I was like, that's a choice. <laughs> So just here, right, we're introducing that A tip to the skin, that really beautiful oil soluble form of vitamin C. We have that beautiful citrus extract in it to make it smell nice, it has this gentle foaming lather. So you can see the, the foam that I'm getting from this isn't super creamy. What sometimes happens is when people use the C cleansing foam, they put it in the divot of their palm. And then when they add the water, there's a big chunk of it that gets left behind in the palm and then sometimes it doesn't rinse off all the way. And so I have, I, I don't wanna like freak anybody out, but I have gotten calls where people are like, I like the sea cleansing foam, but it made me a little dry dehydrated like a week down the a line. And I'm like, was it a lathery foam or a bubbly foam? They're like lathery, I'm like, more water. You're probably not breaking it down enough. So there's probably a little bit of residue behind. All right, so quick removal here. And then if you wanted to, you know, at this point, typically I can start reading my patient's skin while I'm doing my cleansing. Because if you know you have a reactive patient, just the art of cleansing, they're starting to get vascular. And that would be a good identifier to me um, that I'm going to need to be a little bit. Can somebody re dump this out so I can freshen? I just need one. Or I'm going to need both, actually. I lied. Mm. I'm going to need both because I'm going to do a mask. Um, but, you know, typically, like, when you're cleansing somebody, they start getting really vascular. That's going to let you know, hey, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with my peel. Today, because we're doing more of a prevention-type treatment, I am just going to do about three to five minutes of the G-Peel 30 on her skin. While that's on, I can start kind of putting together the rest of her treatment. All right? So to get it started, we're going to start with our pre-peel conditioner. So remember, this is going to have that, you know, light alcohol base to it, med extracted chamomile extract, plus the Derm Shield. Um, so we're going to use these. I'm just going to do a couple of pumps. And like I said, I like to work in little circles with slight pressure. This is ensuring that I'm lifting up all of those vellus hairs, removing any oils or lipids from the skin. And you're gonna notice their skin's gonna get a little red. That's fine. Don't panic. It's just from the friction. But I just wanna make sure I'm getting all those lipids off the skin especially around those nasal labial fold areas. Then I like to unfold and refold, get a clean piece and do the other side. How are you feeling? Good. Perfect. Feels not on yet. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> making sure we're getting that little divot in the chin. And this is also the true test on how good your cleansing is, because when you pull it off, it's, it's yellow. You're like, I gotta work on that a little bit. Slacking off, but we're good. She's nice and clean, getting all those oils off. Now what you don't wanna have happen is you don't wanna oversaturate your gauze so much that when you look at her skin, her skin is wet, right? So you want just enough that we are getting down, we're degreasing the skin, but we don't want the skin soggy because again, that is going to impact how the peel works on the skin surface. All right, so I'm going to, I don't have a garbage can, but we're going to put that to the side. So I'm going to grab my GPL 30. So the GPL 30, when you open it, that thixotropic gel, it's clear 
and it looks like hair wax or hair pomade. I don't know how else to describe it, but it, I mean, it won't come out, all right? So it comes with this super cute, everybody loves our spatulas, so it comes with this pretty little spatula. You're gonna fill up the whole foot of the spatula, kind of a heaping scoop, if you will. Oh, not that much, I just pulled the whole layer off. We don't need all that. About that much is good. Okay, so the whole foot is full. And then I'm gonna put that in my gloved hands. And then away from her eyes, I'm gonna work it between my hands. And I say away from your eyes because sometimes it can crumble. I don't want a glycolic chunk slipping into her eyeball. That would be bad. So we're gonna apply the peel now. People always ask, do you start at the forehead? Do you start, I don't care. Just put it on. I don't care where you start. If you like to start at the forehead, then do it on the forehead. If you like to start at the chin, put it on the chin. You're gonna smell a little funkiness. It is the interaction of the glycolic acid meeting the nitrile gloves. It smells a little eggy, a little mm -hmm. sulfur. It's minimal and it's short. Once I feel like, and what I like about this is now that I have it on my gloved hands, I can get really tight around the lips. Because sometimes when we put liquid peels on, you're just using gauze and it kind of flops around. But now I can get really precise around the eyes, mm -hmm. up into the corrugator. And then once I feel it's completely applied, I like to do a little pressing. Skin should feel slightly tacky. Scale of one to 10, where are we right now? 10 being you're on fire. One. Exactly, there's the derm shield. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna take my gloves off. I'm gonna start my timer. Cause she's at a one, we're gonna do five minutes. Cause why not? If she was like, oh no, I feel that a lot. Then I would say, or if she like was like, I'm at a four or six, then I would say we're gonna do three minutes. Okay, but we're gonna do five. So while she's baking, I'm gonna start setting myself up for the rest of her treatment. So first things first, I wanna close everything up. I don't want things, once your products are open, they're gonna be good for a year. Once they're sealed, they're good on the shelf for two years. So pretty nice long span of time there. Put that aside, I'm gonna pull out my peel neutralizer. That's what I'm gonna use once the five minutes is up. Um, because we're gonna do a prevention and because I'm watching her, she's not vascular no, she's at all. This is so, and this is like acting like a 50% glycolic. Isn't that amazing? So because she's not vasculating or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the lift and whitening ampule. And we're gonna do a blend of, oh, I think there's one already open. We're gonna do a blend of masks. And this is where I like to jump in and give you guys a little hack mm -hmm. on how to make your job easier. The Metaclay mask and the Trio Lift mask like to set on the skin, meaning it's harder for you to get off. So what I like to do is with, if either one, we're gonna use the trio lift today, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the igloo mask. The igloo mask stays really moist and creamy. Just adding one part igloo mask to three part any other mask is gonna make it a world of ease for you to get off the skin. Now if you work with steam towels, don't worry about any of that because the steam towel takes everything off. But if you're going to be doing more manual type work where it's just like you and some sponges in a room, mix those two together. You'll thank me later. So I'm going to pull those out with the ampule. Finishing products, you know me, I'm going to do a retinol topper. Let's throw a little restart on her. Like you're actually mixing them together in a bowl. What, the masks? The masks. Yeah, I mean, I mix Not them like on the back of my hand. Yeah, like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. I uh, will do restart retinol and we'll finish with a lacto. Because, heck yeah. All right. So we have about two and a half minutes left. Um, so while this is on her skin, remember with your GPL 30, that's going to be nano constructed and that's going to act more like a 50% because of the molecular size. Because she's doing so well, 
I would already, I would say her next visit to see me, I would bump her up to the PPL mm -hmm. immediately because she's doing just fine. If I wasn't doing a demo, if I didn't have a bunch of eyes staring at me, I would probably let her sit for seven to 10 minutes. But for time's sake, and so we're not all watching paint dry, um, <laughs> we're gonna do five minutes, right? Um, but I would just put in her chart, like, you know, she didn't even register on a pain scale. I didn't see any vascular changes in her skin. She's good to go for a pee peel next time. And that's just perfect because again, it's just like I want to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And then like once I max out on my time on pee peel, then I can drop her back down to a G peel and start over again. It's kind of like that concept of skin cycling. You know, if you watch TikTok, everyone's skin cycling right now. Um, it's kind of a way to like cycle, if you will, in the treatment room. Okay. Yes. So if you were to go back to a G peel, would you layer then? Not for you, because okay. you don't need it. We're right. doing prevention. Like if I was doing somebody who had like a ton of hyperpigmentation. Then the layering then, is what's more necessary. Yeah, we could start getting into the layering, but you don't have a whole lot. You're one of those girls like, I just, this thing right here really about, I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's like, you're fine. You're totally fine. Um, but yeah, if I was dealing with more like melasma, more intensified hyperpigmentation, acne, then yes, we would want to get into the layering position. And are you waiting a few minutes in between layering? So here's the deal with layering. Like you can layer the pee peel on itself and you want to put one layer down, wait a minute, and then put the, another, the next layer down. But you're gonna start timing it right. from that first, first layer. layer. Oh, okay. okay. Then if, you, like, let's say you, I don't really recommend to do a G peel and then a P peel, <laughs> have I done it? Yeah. I don't know how big of a difference it really is, but if you were gonna do that, you would do the G peel first, time it, neutralize, rinse, and then follow with a P peel, time, neutralize, rinse. But honestly, at that point, I would rather just layer the P peel on right. itself than start mixing them all together. Because we're just gonna start throwing the skin all around mm -hmm. itself, yeah. all right? So we're almost there. Um, but just remember, with glycolic and peruvic acid, it's all about timing. It's not about how much product we're using. I can put that whole thing on her face and it's still gonna be the same because it's it's all about time. It's all about molecular structure and it's all about how it's penetrating through the skin. So we are done. I'm gonna pop another pair of gloves on. Melissa, can you just remind us what type of skin you have? Uh, a more normal to dry skin type. Okay, any other issues? Uh, no, other than when, if I get any sort of blemish, it just stays red for She's a fair Long, Fitzpatrick, yeah. so yeah. she gets so that hormonal, pH. hormonal one or two pimples a month type of thing. Mm, yeah, if that. All right, so now we're going to neutralize, and I do let my patients know because I'm going to neutralize the peel. We're going from one extreme to another. They might feel something, even if she felt nothing in the beginning. She might feel something now. She might. She might not. I don't know. She seems pretty chill. Now, if I put it on when I put first put the peel on, and she felt something, I'm going to let her know. You're going to feel that again, but it's going to be very short lived because I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna neutralize it, and then I'm gonna rinse it with cool water very quickly. Some people like the zip. Some people are like, bring it on, and I'm like, all right. I'm one of those people. Okay, <laughs> good to know for next time. So I wanna saturate my gauze. And you'll see some slight foaming action. Kind of hard to see, but basically, it's just neutralizing the peel. And I keep unfolding my gauze so I get fresh pieces that are saturated. I'm already in the talks. I want them to like triple the size of this because I use a lot of it. I want to triple the size of both of those pumps, but that's another conversation. So this is 200 milliliter right now, right? Yeah, I want it to be like a giant shampoo bottle. <laughs> I, it just, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's totally worth it. Cause this also has the derm shield in it. So remember, this is the sodium bicarbonate plus the derm shield. And how do you feel now? What's your discomfort? Did it zip up at all? Oh, slightly like around my nasal fo uh, folds, but it's still yeah. very manageable. It's still at a one, maybe one and a half. That's totally doable. But then you also sometimes get the drama queens who are like, I'm at a six. And I'm like, are we? <laughs> I think we're okay. But Compared to like deals in the past, this is absolutely nothing. And that's even doing like a 10% lactic acid peel. Mm -hmm. So just a quick rinse. 
that is so gross. And it's funny, every time I get the dramatic patients, they're always doctors. They're like, it's burning! And I'm like, what do you think you do to people all day? <laughs> Melissa, is the second wipe a little spicier than the first? Very mild for me. So like I said, it probably went up half a percentage. Yeah. And this is just water. I felt it just around my nose area. Have you been blowing your nose with uh, the colder weather? Probably, I think, with just the colder weather, yeah. Mm -hmm. Her face is going in red, so she's mm -hmm. not reacting at all. Mm -hmm. no. But again, sometimes people get bright red, and I'm like, are you okay? They're like, yeah, why? And I'm like, no reason. You know? <laughs> That's the thing. Skin's going to skin. You know what I mean? It's, it's tough because skin is going to do what it wants to do, and sometimes there's no answer on why. It could be possible that she's already had peels done before. Her skin is in such good shape. Yeah, it's a good shape. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to do the ampule. So remember how we open it. We're going to snap the top off. And here, I'm going to be pretty liberal, liberal with my application. So this is going to be a conversation that you have with your rep. You can do one of two things. You can incorporate the cost of the ampule into your treatment and whatever you don't use, the patient goes home with. Mm. Yeah. As like a nice little freebie. Or you don't roll in the cost of the ampule for treatment and you put it on your trolley and you keep it for your next patient. But you can still use it for two weeks. You can still use it for about a week and a half, two weeks. Yep. So it just depends. Like how busy are you going to be for the next two weeks? Is it worth it? So that's something that you're going to want to talk with your reps about, how you want that to be done in your clinic. So like I said, because I'm going to be doing a mask over the top, I'm pretty liberal with this. Like I want her to be real shiny. So this is going to have... A nice even balance of sodium PCA and sodium hyaluronate. Plus we're gonna have some oligopeptides in there to help be a tyrosinase inhibitor, so good for some of that hyperpigmentation. But then it's also gonna be fortified with all the other peptides, the pentapeptides and the tetrapeptides to help build and stimulate new collagen and support existing elastin, as well as increased glycosaminoglycans or GAGs, which is like your, your hyaluronic acid within the skin as well. You can put it around the eyes. Yep, right around the spine. Right, so once she feels good and slippery, then I know she's perfect. Anna? Yes. I have a question. Of you mentioned about the D20 that we can layer up can with an, like another layer, but my question is when you apply it, you feel like after a few minutes, five, I don't know, four or five minutes, it's kind of sticky, sticky and yeah. then it, it like, it's like dry. So even if you apply another layer, it's going to penetrate into the job? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, because so you it's don't just, need to neutralize it and take no, it No, if you're going to layer the pee peel on itself, you just. You do one layer, wait a minute, wait about so 60 maximum seconds. maximum 15 minutes when you're Maximum layering. 15 minutes. But I, again, when I'm layering, I'm more conservative. Like if I do like two or three layers. Maximum three. Like I would probably do three to five minutes to start. Again, it's just, we're easing into things. I wouldn't just jump on somebody five layers, 15 minutes. No. Yeah, so. But yeah, just because what happens is as it absorbs into the skin, it gets that kind of tackiness. It doesn't stop the penetration route at all. Mm. It's just how it's absorbing into the skin. The other reason why it kind of feels tacky, one, it's from that thixotropic gel, but two, especially with the Peruvic peel, it's sourced from glucose. It comes from a sugar, so it feels extra sticky in the pea peel because of its sourcing. So I read on instructions that you can apply it with a brush. Could you recommend it to do it? I do not recommend to do that. Not at all? Use your hands. Okay. They need to change them. <laughs> to chill. Uh, here, I'm going to mix one part igloo to three parts trio. Sorry, can we know the reason why we don't want to do it with a brush? Just not an even application. How do you break it down from that hard? Can you show your palm? Thank you. Um, if you're using a brush, you can't break down that hard gel. You need the heat from your hands and the friction. The heat also. Here, you can put this on with a brush. I don't care. Just get the mask on. All right? <laughs> use your hands. Use your feet. I really don't care. <laughs> Just get it on. 
People get so like so wound. Why are you using your hands? I'm like, I don't, because it's what I have. Like, <laughs> what did people do before brushes? You know. This feels really nice. Yeah, this feels really good. Now, the one thing I will say, the igloo mask, because it does have that mentholated compound to it, or like um, grouping of ingredients. If you do have a patient that has any broken skin, um, like say you did like a laser resurfacing or anything like that, it can be a little zippy, okay? So like I've put it on myself after I did like a big laser resurfacing on myself and I was like, whoo, that's igloo moist, all right? You know, it was real, like I felt that menthol complex. So just keep that in mind. When you do masks, do yourself a favor. Don't make it look like the magazines. <laughs> she doesn't need a thick white layer what's that going to do to you come time to take it off yes. make your job so much harder and it's wasting a ton of your product and back bar and trust me when i tell you when i because i teach people all the time and i watch how much mask they're putting on like how much is this treatment costing your patient yeah. exactly. because the amount of mask you just used you need to incorporate the whole tube it's too much so you don't need much. A little light layer is all you need. I know we all want to look like La Nouveau Esthétique and Day Spa Magazine and the cucumbers on the eye. We don't need all that. <laughs> She's fine. It's on. It's great. <laughs> all right. So while that's on, I'm just going to rinse my hands off. I have everything ready to go. Now the mask, here's the thing. It can be a completely optional situation. So if you're more of a clinical approach, Right? And I say this because in America, in the States, like our medical practices, the nurse practitioners like don't even know how to cleanse somebody's skin. I'm like, okay, so go ahead and cleanse your skin. She's like, I don't, how, how do I do that? I'm like, how do you wash your face? And they're like, like this. And I'm like, then do that to her. They're like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, you inject people all day, girl, right? So I, you know, if you're in a more clinical setting where maybe the whole facial aspect isn't your jam. You can omit this portion. You could just do the peel and then throw some finishing products and get them out the door and boom, now you have like a nice quick 20 minute turn and burn, right? I hate to use that term, but let's be real, what are we doing, all right? Then if you wanna do the more long drawn out treatment like I'm doing here, which is gonna be more like 45 to 60 minutes, which has you know the ampules and the masking, you have that opportunity as well. So I want you guys to know that we're gonna give you those protocols that are full out treatments, but you can omit things for time or comfort level for yourself, all right? So I know we get so hung up on like, these are the instructions, and then I come in, I'm like, do whatever you want. Like so, but just know if like you're stuck in a, in a lurch, you can do that. Like if somebody comes in, they're like, I have 30 minutes for lunchtime, I'm like, I can get you in, sit down. Yeah. I don't wanna turn somebody away because it's like, oh, I need 20 minutes for masking. It's like, no girl, sit down. I'm not turning away money at my door, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, let's just get you cleansed, pre-peel, peeled, ampule, finishing, out the door, right? Hey now, yes. can you say something about, there was a question about the cost per treatment for the clinic. I know that you are in US dollars. I don't know you US exactly. Um, so. Uh, as far as I calculated, according to the breakdown, it's about $20, $25 for all the ingredients for everything. For, uh, no, so no, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's so the thing. This is, this is normally when I let the sales rep okay. talk. I don't talk. I don't know how much anything costs. Okay, so we'll we we send you the breakdown, <laughs> exactly how much you uh, use from each product and how much it comes to. How many pumps did you use on the neutralizing the... Uh, the neutralizer, the all said and done, I probably used anywhere from six to eight pumps. So which means that you will, if you continue doing this, you can last more than six treatments. No. It's 200 mil? It lasts way more than six treatments. And so how many treatments last the... <laughs> Again, that... They're all, I don't have it off the top of my head. Again, I can tell you how everything works and yeah. what everything does. Way, way more than you think. We but have, we, have, we have the breakdowns for you. We have the breakdown. We yeah. have the breakdown for They you. live in an email. I'm sure they're sitting in my inbox. I will make sure that this all gets to you guys. But trust me when I tell you, you will run out of the pre-peel conditioner first. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's why I'm trying to get it in a bigger size because it just makes more sense. But, yeah, but... You can talk with your reps and like, because in, in the States with our opening order,
for back bar, like we do a back bar opening order, you get one of every peel, but then you get two of the pre-peel conditioner and of the oh, peel no. neutralizer. So that's something maybe that you guys can yes. do for your, your clinic back bar order. Yeah. You just double these for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but again, it's something I'm really pushing. I'm like, we just need them in yeah, bigger sizing, especially like in my medical yeah. clinics where we're using them with yeah. lasers. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. The thermal yeah. the thermogel. I'm trying to have it. You don't need it for your treatment. If you were more of an acne patient, no, the thermogel. Yeah. All right. So great question she brought up. The thermogel, where would that live? So if I was doing an acne patient, I would have cleansed, double cleansed, then I would have done the thermogel, then I would have done extractions. Oh, okay. Then I would have, you know, just and then I would have pre-peeled, conditioned, and then peeled, oh, okay. and then gone into this. Okay. So again, it's all going to be listed on your protocols. Cool. Okay. So you would always do. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. You would always do the extractions prior to the peel, or peel. Do whatever you want. <laughs> I don't feel it makes that big of a difference. Okay. Okay. To be honest, Masha, if you're hearing this, whatever you say is right. Um, <laughs> but in, in my in my workings and all my 15 you know years of teaching 20 or 21 years in practice i ha there's some patients where i want to do the, the peel first and be get all that if they have a really Soften thick it. skin yeah. like a true acneic skin i want to do the peel first get as much of that skin kind of dissolved first then go in and soften everything up then do the extractions so i'm going to leave that up to you okay either way is fine her face isn't gonna fall off. It's gonna be okay. Now, some people, if I put, if I'm cleansing her skin and her skin got really red, I'm then probably irritating the skin already. Exactly. I'm so gonna do the thermogel like first the and then the peel secondary. Peel secondary. Exactly. You see where I'm going. Yeah. So it's all gonna be dependent on who's her body. skin drives the treatment. Yeah. Okay. I can look at a piece of paper and a protocol all day long, but, but you know what changes that? She does. Yeah. Okay. Because like if all of a sudden I'm like, oh, but I followed the protocol and her face is just exploding, then I'm not doing my job. No, it does. I have a question. So which product specifically does the job of the exfoliation? The peel. No, if they don't want to do the peel, like as a custom facial. A lot of Maybe you mean extractions? No, the exfoliation. So she's talking about it. If we were just doing like a maintenance? Yeah, maintenance. Oh, then I wouldn't do exfoliation at all. Yeah, if right. I'm doing a maintenance treatment, the maintenance is just hydrating and, and treating the skin. It's not exfoliating at all. But we need to remove the dead skin first. But, if it, but it, again, if it's maintenance, maintenance, that means her skin can't handle exfoliation. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a maintenance job to strengthen her skin. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do... I might do some thermogel if I wanted to. I could do some little extractions there. Double cleanse, thermogel, but then I would do ampule, mask, mm -hmm. finishing products, that's it. But that's a maintenance treatment because that's the whole thing. Like if I'm working, okay. So like if I'm working on a patient, let's say I sold her a series of six peels. This is how I used to work. I would sell a package of six peels. The seventh peel they got free, mm -hmm. but I made that seventh peel a maintenance mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where would I stick the maintenance treatment? In the middle. Mm -hmm. Because typically first peel, I'm intro. By third peel, I've taken her up high. Boom, fourth treatment, I want to do maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. No exfoliation, hydration, rebuilding, strengthening. Boom, coming back, fourth treatment. Now I can start working back up again. But you yeah. can still include the, any of the lactose in the maintenance treatment. We, yeah, you could totally include a lacto in the maintenance. That's a finishing okay. product. So that would be your exfoliation. But as for like a professional exfoliation, it's a no on the maintenance. But you see what I did there? I added value to my package of six, and it cost me less money. Right. The Rent in New York is expensive, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but you know, these are things that you can do. And that's the other thing too, is I never will do a one-off peel for somebody. Somebody comes in and they're like, I booked a peel. And I'm like, when's your next one booked? They're like, I didn't do it. I'm like, I'm not going to do this. Right. Doesn't make peel, sense. It's like going to the gym once and doing yeah. abs for a day. And you're like, why don't I have a six pack? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not how that works. <laughs> you have to keep coming back. It's you're not going to have this peel and your melasma is gone yeah. when you go yeah. home. Right. So it's like, we need to sit down and be realistic on our expectations. That's when I'm like, hey, so I do a package of six. You just need to know how to play around with what you have in your heads and what is needed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And trust your gut. Like, you are all professionals yeah. here. I think we forget sometimes how smart we are. Yeah. 
Because I see girls second guessing themselves all the time. I'm like, you know what you're doing. Why are you freaked? Because I'm here. It's like, calm down. If uh, someone can afford a series of six, do you do like three, a three, six, step. twelve kind mm -hmm. of thing? Yeah. Three would be my next step down, but I wouldn't do anything lower than three. Yeah. So now I'm just going to remove, and you can see already that that trio lift likes to stick around. So imagine had I not put the igloo mask in there, how much harder this would be. I don't know. Excellent. I feel like I'm in like a Mentos commercial. <laughs> it's so fresh. Yeah. Everything smells really good. Everything feels really good. Anna, can I tell you can I tell you a story of last week? Yes, please. Ellen called me from Montreal. She was at one of our customers in Ottawa. Have a radiant. And, and she said that after the trial lift, it mm -hmm. was like after a Maximus treatment. Mm. All her face went up. Yeah, it's that so hydrolyzed um, sesame protein. It really has a nice firming effect. And another thing that you can do while they're masking, a um, couple of other little add-ons if you wanted to prior to the mask, while the ampule's on, if you have LED light, I was gonna ask you that. Pop that LED light on before they mask. And remember, when they're under that LED light, I always joke it's like the hot chicken lamp, they get a little dried out under there. So you can keep applying the ampule while they're under the LED. Do that for you know 15, 20 minutes, whatever, pull the, that, the LED off, do another layer of ampule, and then mask. Can we do high frequency? You could totally do high frequency if you wanted to. You could do galvanic iontophoresis with yeah. the ampules. It's totally fine. You could do microcurrent at that point. All right. Just make sure her nostrils are clear, under the chin is clear, ears are clear. We are good. And now we're going to finish up. So I'm going to start with a little bit. Let's do some haloronic. I'm going to do four drops of halo. So remember order of weight. So halo is a low and a high weight HA. Then I'm going to do restart. About pump and a half. Oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. The Red Star has a nice citrus aroma to it. Mm. This is the following. Yeah, this is the finishing product. Like There's two thought processes. Some people oh. like to do a lot of finishing products. Sometimes if I'm working on a real acneic skin, I keep the skin dry, dry, dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to do my retinol topper. So this is a 1%. If she was a little more vascular, I would have dropped it down to a 3%. Yeah. So again, let her skin guide your treatment. You wanted glazed donut, you're getting glazed donut. <laughs> I want to make sure that Renal is getting everywhere. And then I'm going to finish up with a Lacto 15. And then I could do uh, SPF, but we don't have that yet, Health Canada. <laughs> we'll just give them shout outs every time we're lacking <laughs> something. But there we go. And then I would let her know, tonight, let's go to bed like this. Tomorrow morning, you can wake up and start using your starter kit or do your normal routine tomorrow. You're gonna to be totally fine. Because of the derm shield, she can go right into exfoliation the next day. So there's no like waiting time to start your actives. No? Go ahead. If she was more vascular, I'd be like, oh, maybe skip retinol tomorrow. But I, I think I've only had to say that once in the year I've been working with her. 
Anna, what is the cost of this treatment? Mm -hmm. That's what we have yeah. to figure out. It's, it's, oh. it's like 23, 24 oh, no, dollars. Like to like overall, like That's you charge the client. Oh, you're uh, charging so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What's you. What are you charging? Let me, let me see you. Wonderful. How does it feel? Amazing. I feel lightweight, like very nice and fresh. And it's been lifted. It feels lifted. Yeah, it feels really nice. Yeah, I mean, it really nice and uh, really fresh. No, well, it was very, very mild. I would just maybe a little bit around my nose, but other than that, but it was didn't feel like from what I'm used to. Yeah, especially like I said, even lack. Yeah. I sometimes feel yeah. super itchy, itchy, yeah. But and no. here you didn't feel anything? No, maybe a one, one, of, one and a half out of ten. Wonderful. Yeah. The miracle of the damn shape. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being so nice, Morgan. Yeah, of course. Thank you.